Welcome to part six of the eight part series in the application entry in Podium best practice webinar series. We're currently now going to look at part 2.4, completing the loan worksheet. Uh, previously, you would have looked at uh, part 2.3, which is a simulation and comparison. We'll now take a look at the loan worksheet in Podium. Um, you can see that it has recently changed in the last couple of weeks to a, a new uh, layout. Uh, we're looking at the Thomas Ferris application here. Uh, a couple of things to note that have changed is it's a more condensed layout now. Um, and a lot of the, as you can see here up in the summary tab, where the state fees and charges are, a lot of the fields are now being compressed and you just click on the details tab to see the details behind it. Otherwise, they're in a summary format. So what we need to look at here in the loan worksheet is to check that the security value is uh, correct. Our state primary purpose, property use, property status is right. Our lender, now we can do a number of different scenarios here based on different lenders, um, but NAV is our, currently you can see up here, scenario one is our preferred, but we can also look at different scenarios here as well when we look at the loan worksheet. But at the moment, we're just looking at the recommended and preferred. You will notice here, loan amount 500,000. The bottom right-hand corner currently has a shortfall of 175,000 and uh, that is caused by the absence of a borrower's contribution. Now, the, the way the loan worksheet is designed is that it is a check and balance to make sure that um, you, the broker or podium user, has a check to see whether the, com the, com the client has sufficient funds to complete the transaction. So what we need to do is add in the buyer's contribution here. We click on edit. In this case, there was 250,000 in savings to be added. And then we click on done. Um, and we can now see that we've gone in surplus. We know that this is the contribution combined with the loan amount will allow for uh, the security to be purchased. Uh, there's one other step that we need to look at in this particular transaction, and that is uh, Thomas Ferris is a first home buyer. So we need to then go down into the concessions tab here, and if we click on the box, we then select first home buyer here. And what you'll see is now changed up in the field here, state fees and charges. So if we click on the details tab, we've just got our auto save clicking over at the moment. So it's a great reminder to make sure everyone has got auto save switched on. We click on the details tab here and that reveals that there was no transfer stamp duty um, and the remainder of the transaction uh, is as we expected to be. So the two fees there making up the uh, 283 in state fees and charges. Click on hide again and uh, we're good to go. Like I said, remember you can then also put in another scenario um, and scenario two in this case might be for a different lender. So we can put in and do a loan worksheet for that particular uh, lender. There's no other real um, things to point out here. All the other functionality remains the same. It's just laid out in a more compressed uh, fashion for you to um, e more easily navigate around. So. Uh, on that basis, we've now completed the loan worksheet. We've completed video number six, 2.4, the loan worksheet. Our next video will be the serviceability assessment, which is a video number seven. Thank you for your attendance today, and we'll talk to you again in video 2.5. Thank you.